Imagine with me again that this church is a big river and where their tabernacle is, that's our goal. That's where we wanna go, that's heaven. And the bad news I shared last week, the current of this river is going that way, aggressively, trying to prevent us from getting to our goal, which is heaven. And last week I shared about the difficulties of our culture and you might feel kind of special in which, oh, we have such a tough time here. But the reality is, as we heard in today's second reading and in the gospel, every single time is difficult. Every single time has a special challenge. We're all special. And ever since Adam and Eve rebelled against God, the current of this river has gone that way. The river itself has become enemy-occupied territory, and the enemy is in control, and it's going directly that way against us. And we honestly feel, often coming to Mass, that the only option we have is just to hold on. We're aware that the current's going that way, against the path to heaven, and we're aware of how many people have abandoned the faith and gotten swept away. And because we're trying to stay faithful, we just feel like, I just gotta hold on and just make it to the end. You know, we sang today's responsorial psalm, go into all the world and proclaim the good news. I'm not sure how many people sang that with real force, because maybe you think, well, that work of evangelization, you know, that's just Father Hamilton, Father Richard. That's why they have YouTube channels, you know? They proclaim the good news to all the world. But, but me, you know, my job is not to evangelize, it's just to hold on. Evangelizing is risky in this culture. Talking about difficult moral issues is hard. And so I'm just gonna mind my own business, just show up to mass, check the box, be a nice person, and that should be good enough to get to heaven, right? It's wrong. Jesus, out of his great love for us, out of his love for us, true love, warns us directly against this approach of just holding on. The million-dollar question is asked in today's gospel, Lord, will only a few be saved? What is the first word that Jesus uses in response to this great question? It's a verb that goes directly against the path of holding on. The, the verb is strive, strive. Jesus contrasts this word strive with another word, try. Try, in the original Greek that Jesus spoke, is just implying a desire. Someone just has a desire to get to heaven, but there's no real effort. He says people will try but will not enter. And he contrasts this word try with the word strive. And in the original Greek, the word strive is agonizomai. Say that with me, agonizomai, agonizomai. Does that sound like something in English? Sounds like agony. Yes, because that's what he's implying, that to actually strive involves a sort of agony, a real difficulty. The Greeks use this word agonizomai to speak about two things an intense struggle for anyone joined in an athletic endeavor, so athletes, agonizamide, and people in battle who are trying to win the victory, they agonizamide as well. And so Jesus uses this word to make it abundantly clear that just trying to hold on and just trying, hoping you get to heaven, it doesn't work. Eventually, you'll get swept away, either in this life by the current of this culture that is sweeping away so many people, or in the life to come. Jesus warns us about getting swept away for all of eternity, where the result is just weeping and gnashing of teeth. Out of his love for us, he tells us this. And out of his love for us, he's providing all of us, myself included, with the option to choose a different way today, to choose a different way. So thanks be to God, there is hope. And to give us the sign of hope, I have a question for you. I love questions. And so the question for you, I wanna get you involved, okay? So if the Catholic Church was a sports team and had a mascot, who would this mascot be? 
I'll give you three options. The first option is a lion, the king of the jungle for his strength and ability to protect others from getting swept away by this culture. It so could be a good one. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, you know. Second option is an eagle, the king of the sky for his ability to soar above the corruption and be safe from enemy attack. It's also a good one. God was re constantly referred to as an eagle throughout scripture. That's why in Lord of the Rings, when they say the eagles are coming, it's a reference from Tolkien to something scriptural, that God is like an eagle. Third option, a unicorn. This is what my nieces would say. The mascot has to be a unicorn because a unicorn is magical and a unicorn always gets to heaven, right? The unicorn as well is in the Bible. You should check it out. So three options. Who wants to say, raise your hands with me. Who wants to say a lion? Hey, a couple people. Okay, who wants to say an eagle? Okay, a couple less people. A unicorn? Most people. My nieces would love this. Well, as you're getting to know me, you're all wrong. Okay, you're all incorrect. I already told the answer last week. It is a salmon. Yes, he's back. And this time, he's got a friend, okay? So, this is our salmon. The mascot of the Catholic Church, the sports team. And this is his friend. Okay? So... We have two friends here. Okay. <laughs> to explain, because I have a real purpose in showing this. In the great movie, Finding Nemo, Marlin, the daddy fish, goes on a really difficult journey to find his son. Lots of dangers, threats, unknowns. Thankfully though, in this difficult journey, he has a friend. So this is Marlin, and this is Dory. During a really difficult time, Marlin wants to give up. He's just like, done. What does Dory say? Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills, when life gets you down, do you know what you got to do? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do you got to do? You got to swim. So Dory is a true friend to Marlon. And together, together, they complete their journey to where they want to go. Last week, I spoke about how salmon, once they've reached adulthood, they undertake an amazing journey going upstream, sometimes 900 miles, 7,000 feet in elevation, navigating roaring rapids, vicious currents, hungry bears, fishermen, everything to reach their destination so that when they die, they can produce an abundance of life. And this week, I want to make it really clear, salmon never do it alone. There's no solo missions of a salmon. When they reach adulthood, they swim together. They always go in groups. They always do it as a team. Every salmon, in a sense, you could say, has a dory. And if you could hear salmon language, if you could understand salmon talk, you would know that probably many times in the journey, there's a little dory saying, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we gotta do? We gotta swim. That's what Jesus did. Jesus is the king salmon, the goat the greatest of all time, who undertook the most difficult of all journeys to reach his destination, so that when he died, he could produce an abundance of eternal life for us. But Jesus never went alone. He always had a dory. He always had someone to journey by his side, even on the way to the cross, even at the cross. John the Beloved is the dory of Jesus, the beloved friend who is by his side, telling Jesus, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. And if Jesus had a dory, and Jesus is perfect, well, what about you and me? Are we exempt from this? 
No. And so the question is, do you have a dory on the difficult swim to heaven? Do you? Can you name this person right now? Who is your dory? Do you have someone who's telling you to just keep swimming upstream against the culture? Do you have someone swimming with you? Not just telling you, but living it out with you, side by side. Do you have someone that reminds you of today's second readings when times go really hard? Hey, we're undergoing this trial, but it's for a good reason. God is treating us as sons. So endure this trial. Eventually, it'll yield the peaceful fruit of righteousness. That's exactly what the salmon's journey looks like. Do you have someone to strive with you side by side rather than just try? Do you have someone like that to say when times are hard, just keep swimming, 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 swimming? Two days ago, Lois Umali, the head of youth ministry, got married here. And to roast her husband during the homily, I said that I shared in the interview that I asked Neil, why do you want to get married to Lois? And he said, Lois really wants me to get to heaven. That was his reason. And the way that it was kind of put, it's kind of funny. Like, oh, is that really the reason? Because I want you to get to heaven too, Neil. But Neil actually took today's gospel seriously. Lois is Neil's dory. Lois is the person that cares above all else for Neil, her husband, to get to the destination. She's going to continually be by his side, striving, not trying, striving to get to heaven. So, do you have someone like that? Do you have a dory? Are you a dory for someone else? That might even be a harder question to answer. Who are you a dory for? And would they say that you are dory? If this is not a reality for you, it's okay. Corpus Christi, we want to do something about it. That's why we're here. We're here to change the world. And one of our core values is called evangelical hospitality. Simply, it's having a whole bunch of dories, people that are willing to help others strive to get to heaven, to journey with each other side by side on the difficult upstream path to heaven. That's why we're here, to live out evangelical hospitality, to have a whole bunch of dories so that we know we're never alone in the difficult journey to heaven. And imagine what would happen if every single person here chose to be a dory for someone. Imagine what that would do to our parish if every person intentionally chose to be a dory to someone else. Imagine the impact that would not only have as up, as up for a parish family here, but also the culture in this area of Vancouver. The impact. We have a parish picnic next weekend. Imagine what it would be like for people to say, wow, there's something special happening at that picnic. They seem to be really alive. They seem to really like a family striving for some great goal in life. That's what we want at Corpus Christi. So my brothers and sisters, the Catholic Church is really a sports team. We really do have a mascot, the salmon, and we really do have an opponent, the enemy, Satan. And he is trying to do whatever he can so that we don't strive. So we give in to discouragement or despair, to give up on the journey. But the truth is, is that Satan is terrified of us. Satan is terrified of Dory, people that are willing to help others strive on the narrow path to heaven. He's terrified of saints. And so we have an opportunity today to choose to be like Dory, to stand up and to strive with others on the narrow path to heaven, to keep telling people, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, 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 swimming. What do we got to do? We swim.